of a child in danger. I am here to tell you the story as a reminder that this story has millions of children faces even today. We are all walking and running on top of hot coal hoping to survive. Survival find the UN refugee camp where hope grows. I survived to tell you the story so that you hear and feel what happened in the life of a refugee, a child that you can gain insight to what it takes and what you can do to help. What you can do to help a refugee grow strong in survival skill so they can help others. We are not heroes. We are only children who avoid death by holding on to everyday hope. Today I stand before you with a compelling mission to help as many refugees as I can. If you walk with me as if you were one of the refugee children, you may see fear in some eyes, but those who are running to safety will also see hope. My day began like any other day. There was no sign that the day would be different. There was no talk between my mother and father to make me believe that danger was looking at the end of our land. I was just playing outside with my friends, as children <coughs> play games, hide and seek. There was no girl of a tiger, bay of an elephant, or even distant lion rock. The silence, the happiness, the joy was brutally interrupted by, by what I could hear in my hears this today with a popping popcorn, the sound of a popping popcorn. Then realize it was machine gun fire. That was that moment when a child not knowing what to do. I was only eight years old. We all froze in places, wondering what we do as the machine gun continued. We see nothing but smoke, the dust flying everywhere, we couldn't even see each other, and we scattered out, running a marathon, a racing for our life. I ran toward my home, was hoping to find my family, mom and dad. I reached my house, no one was there. What do I do? Now I'm trying to run, as a continue, the gun continue, um, I'm trying to grab to every adult that come my way to help me. Everyone reject me. I luckily find my 10 year old brother. I grabbed him. We cling to each other. We all both drop flat on our stomach as the bullet continued. We ran for hours. We went to places we don't even know where we run into, but the lessest area that where the guns are slow, uh, or less guns uh, were sounding. So we ran as much as we could for hours, and we ran away from our village, and sure enough, we grew. 
we were among a number of people which, when we counted from the elders, was a thousand people. We decided that evening we want to leave South Sudan. We want to go to different places where there's less danger. So we decide to go. We didn't know how long it would take. But then I had this hope that helped me through the process that I'm going to return back to my parents. I will see my mother again. Sure enough, it's not possible for me. We took off. We went toward Ethiopia. We left Ethiopia. We went toward Kenya. We were walking by foot. Now, I remember counting 45 days of walking in the wilderness where there's no food, no water. The most dangerous animal was the friendliest to us. We had to wake up early in the morning so we can beat the rising sun to have a chance to drink the dew from the, water, from the leaf. The journey took longer, but sure enough, we reached to a refugee camp where we were accepted to be uh, to have a chance to be sponsored by Lutheran Social Services and to come to the U.S. Our, my journey took four years in the refugee camp just hoping to return to my parents, not only just not sure if I'm going to be able to have a chance to come to this country, you're waiting on the line that you were so anxious to know if you have that chance. If that darkness will be, have a light. Many refugees suffer in the refugee camp. There's not enough food. Now, we were greeted and given Sheet. You know, when you're in the refugee camp, they either give you a tent where you can have it as a home. But in my case, because there were so many refugees in that camp, Kakuma camp, we were only given a sheet. And that sheet was my home for four years. So, we then, one day, got up and our name was listed and was accepted to come to the U.S. Now there is this battle. Is it, should we go back home to find our family? Should we come to the U.S. and not sure where we're coming to? My brother said we are going to the United States. Now he's only 10. Uh, I wonder how he was so gifted in being strong and known and make a decision that he made. I say, we'll go, as you say. So, we entered the uh, U.S. in 1995, the year of Clinton administration that accepted us. Um, we then tried to reach or locate my parents. Now we are dealing with, tele, you know, um, writing letters. Uh, no phone to really direct call them. Um, and we luckily find out that my father was killed. My mother was alive with my two siblings. We located them and brought them to Ethiopia where we can have a teleconversation, telephone conversation. A year later, my mother passed away for a simple cause, water contamination. Now we didn't know what else to do. This dark world getting darker for us. What can we do? 
and a far, far distant. Now we in this country where we have a chance to live our life and better ourselves. My brother and I got together along with relatives and say we want to build a school in South Sudan. We sure enough gave 50% of our salary that we were uh, making. We built a school that served 300 children in the region. That school was the hope for many children who, are, who were waiting uh, in unknown situation. Now, uh, the school got burned down in 2005, along with our six relatives. Now what do we do? I said to my brother, I'm not giving up. I have a purpose in this life, and the reason I survive, I want to help one, if not many, one. And that one person will help another. And we'll continue helping many if we can stand together. So we formed FONMET, African Peace Foundation, an organization that named after my grandfather, a man that stood strong in his time, stand for peace, unity, and giving. So ThonMet was a private uh, 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 organization for 19 years. And when South Sudan went to civil war in 2013, we decided to come as a public charity and establish our 501c3. Now we want to help refugees. We started what we call Underground Railroad. We were taking refugees from overcrowded refugee camp to a better place. So we took 22 refugees from overcrowded refugee camp to a better place, which we locate them from South Sudan to Ethiopia to Kenya. Now we have, we learned that the refugee camp was overcrowded. There's no better place for them. We decided, my brother and I again, to build a village in Ethiopia in a land owned by our grandfather, Thomas. In 2014, we started our first home, a hut that we moved an eight years old uh, boy named Joel and his mother, an orphan boy. They, that, that was our first family. <coughs> so now we have 22 people in this village. And we want to build more for them. So our organization is small. But I have, I know in my heart, okay. because when you help one, you will help another one. So Thonmet now have 14 children, and they are thriving in the village. They are learning the life what they need to do, the necessity. We build one hut for three people. $2,000 is the cost of a hut. And we're not only giving them a hut, we have to purchase a cow, a canoe. Now the kids have volunteer teacher who is teaching them outside a tree. We also learning the, uh, teaching them the process of aquaculture, so where they can sustain themselves. 
and learn how to survive for their own. Now, there are thousands, millions of refugees waiting in refugee camps right now. But because we cannot bring them, we cannot reach all of them right now, we are giving them hope by building a hot home for them. So thank you very much. And thanks to agencies that are making it possible for many refugees to see that hope. Thank you.